And in what appears like a test of might, a few days after the Ondo State Security Network Agency, known as Operation Amotekun, was launched by Governor Oluwarotimi Akiridulu, armed men suspected to be kidnappers have struck in the state. The gunmen on Saturday night were said to have kidnapped one Surajuddin Alao, a native of Oba Koko. Another yet to be identified victim was also kidnapped alongside Alao. The two were said to have been in, abducted at the Ikun Oba Koko Road while returning from Ikun Day Festival. Akoko Axis in the northern senatorial district of the state has been a notorious route for bandits where they operate unhindered. And joining us to talk more on the Amotekun launch in Ondo State and the state of insecurity is the Director General of Development Agent Agenda rather, for Western Nigeria, Don uh, Sheye Oyele. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Very well. Let me start by congratulating you on the launch of Amotekun Initiative uh, in Ondo State a few days ago. And uh, let's get straight to the issue. Can you bring us up to speed on the initiative in other Southwest states? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, as you rightly said, um, I'm the Director General, Don Commission. Don Commission actually midwifed the setting up of the Western Nigeria Security Network across the six Southwest states, which was uh, basically a response to the security challenges across the region, which we had over the last um, year and a half. And as you can see, Ondo State has gone the full hog now. They've gone fully live. They've launched. Um, that was done about five, six days ago in Accra. With the other states, there are different stages of coming out as well. Um, Osho is at the final stages of its recruitment. Same thing as Oyo, the recruitment is ongoing. Uh, with Lagos, Lagos is ready. Uh, Lagos didn't do any recruitment per se because um, what they did was um, uh, some members of the existing neighborhood force were co-opted and um, set up as the Amoteco in Lagos. So um, Lagos is not recruiting. They're just waiting for the appointment of the commandant and they will take off. Uh, you know, your, the recruitment is ongoing. People have been told to go to the recruitment portal. The governor has uh, recently released funds, about 60, 70 million, about a week or two ago. And um, in, as I said, in Ekiti as well, recruitment is ongoing. What has caused a bit of delay actually has to do with the coronavirus that um, slowed a lot of things down in March. Uh, because ideally, we thought that by May, June, everybody should have been on the road. But better late than never, now they're coming right. out one by one. And I suspect that by the time we get to, this is August, by the time we get to the end of October, I expect all the states, or at least near four of the states, to have fully rolled out. Okay. So that's where we are at the moment. Yeah. All right. I, I really also want to see uh, seek well, some clarity on the mode of operation of the security network. Um, mm. Are they allowed to carry weapons? And, and if no, how then can they disarm weapon-wielding kidnappers and bandits? Well, uh, as um, Governor Akiridu, who is the chairman of the Western Nigeria Governors Forum, did say the other day, they're allowed to carry a certain type of weapons. Um, the law that set them up allows them to carry a certain type of weapons. And that's what you'll be seeing them. Uh, you will see with them when you see them on the roads. Um, they are not going to be totally unarmed. That's not possible. You can't put, uh, you can't endanger lives of uh, the young men and women. So they will be carrying arms, but a certain le level of arms that's been approved by the constitution and the federal government. Is every every one of them going to be given a weapon? No. Uh, um, the, the way it's been done is that it's, um, again, a certain crop of the officers will be the ones carrying apps. So you okay. won't see all of them in its entirety carrying apps. Okay, brilliant. And, and uh, help us understand what difference this makes with the call for state police, um, even by some hmm. state actors. You, you, you see, when, when, the, when the idea for Western Nigeria Security Network was conceived, and I'm, I'm, again, I'm emphasizing the word security network, because it isn't an alternative um, army or alternative police or a regional army, nothing to do with that. It's purely um, um, uh, an outfit that was set up to face the challenges we face we were, we were com that was confronting us as a region or as a group of contiguous states. Uh, as I said, 2019, 2018, we had serious security challenges. And don't forget, and I keep saying this all the time, that this is a federal country. Our governors are called the chief security officers of their state. And 
what we are saying is if we want a properly, if we are running a proper federal structure, then state police is minimal. I mean, I, 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 I can give an example of the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom is probably not uh, up to one quarter of Nigeria in population size, but they have different levels of policing. It's only in Nigeria at the moment that is claiming to be a federal country and we want a one size fits all police. We have about 400,000 policemen for 200 million population. It's not going to work. So anything that complements the efforts, and make no mistake, the police are doing a lot of work. They do a lot of work, but their efforts need to be complemented. So anything that complements their security, is that's what the governors in the South have decided to do. And so if you call it, well, it's not state police at the moment. It's just a security network um, um, from the six states. But eventually, eventually, we will need to confront our demons as a country. We will eventually need to get to that what All we right. call see, state police. I know the fear is, oh, uh, one governor will misuse this. That's not true. I mean, if the president is not misusing the Nigerian police, then why should the governor misuse, the okay. misuse a state police? And there will be adequate laws anyway, just like the Amoteco thing. There are laws in place that safeguards the interests of the citizens. So we will have to get there eventually. I, I, I believe we're on the road down that place. Okay. And uh, eventually we'll get there. The, the, the this also that, uh, to be misused is unfounded. All right. This also speaks, you know, kind of in the direction, you know, um, concerning devolution of powers. So I want I want you to speak mm -hmm. um, on what the Dawn's Commission's position is on devolution of powers. Uh, well, uh, again, you see, uh, we are Dawn Commission. We are purely for a federal structure, a properly federal structure. You see, we have what we, in Nigeria, we have what we call the concurrence and the exclusive list. And we argue that there are a lot of things on the exclusive list that shouldn't be there in the first place. Uh, and um, one of the arguments is, oh, how will the states afford certain things on this? It's to make sure that the pre present fiscal allocation is restructured. So in the present state where the federal government takes about 50-something percent, that will not be there. The money will be, um, part of the money will go down to the states. Then they will have the funds to do a lot of things. What we are saying in short is the federal structure we are operating at the moment is not ideally what it to be. Uh, in fact, I call it a quasi-unitary system that we are running. It will federal by name. There are a lot of things that can be devolved down to the states, which will make for an effective efficient country. You see, all this clamor at times, this um, ethnic clamor, ethnic um, um, fights that we're having here and there, it's because maybe, and it's not even maybe, I think that quite a few of us or quite a few Nigerians are thinking that they are too far away from the port, from the proverbial port. Governance is too far away from them. Now, you can say, oh, but we have the local governments. Are they really empowered? Even the states. There are a lot of things that the states cannot do. The little they can do, yes, they have. They are trying to do that with the limited funds they have. But down the road, we need to operate a proper federal structure All that right. allows states to thrive. This system that we have at the moment is where every month our states go over to Abuja, cap in hand, to collect funds before they can exist. That is not federal. That is that is not federalism. In All right. Opinion. So and in anybody's opinion, I mean, why should a state like Oyo or a state like um, Edo until they get to Abuja collect money before they can exist? That, that's not federal structure. Okay. So that, those are the things that people are clamoring for when you hear restructuring or fiscal restructuring. It's not that they want to dismantle the country. Nobody wants to do that. What we are saying is that we want an efficiently run country on federal terms, federal terms. Federal Republic of Nigeria should be Federal Republic of Nigeria indeed. All right. Not just... Be because of time, we, we need to, um, um, of course, uh, conclude here. Thank you so much, uh, DG Development Ag Agenda for Western Nigeria, Dawn Commission, Sheye Oyele, for speaking with us. You're welcome.